Hi, this is Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is a division of RNK Distributing, and I want to welcome you to this month's Project of the Week. Now, we have had a lot of questions over the last two weeks about removing overlap. So we're going to focus on that for this week's lesson. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just talk to you about what is that exactly. Now, I'm going to create two shapes. I'm simply going to come up here to my complex fill. And with a series of left mouse clicks, I'm just going to create a complex fill shape. Now, when you're creating a complex fill shape, you don't need to close it. Let the program close it. Now, I did a series of left mouse clicks. Now, I'm going to right mouse click, and it's asking me, what kind of angle do you want in here? So at this time, I could change my angle to anything I wanted. Now when I right mouse click, it's asking me, where do you want me to start? So I'm going to place my green dot where I want the design to start, and I'm going to left mouse click. Then it's asking me, where do you want the last stitch to go? Well, again, I'm going to put my red dot somewhere on the line, wherever I want it, and I'm going to say, go ahead and left mouse click and it's going to go ahead and create my fill. Now we're going to create a second fill and I want a contrast so we can see real good so I guess I'll get this yellow and again with just a series of left mouse clicks I am going to create a shape. Right mouse click, chain, put, make your angle, right mouse click left where you want it to start, left where you want it to end, and it will generate stitches. So I have two fills on the screen. I'm going to select my second fill and I'm just going to place it over the top of my first one. Now in this area right here, it's doubled up. So that's going to make it very dense, very thick, and very heavy. Normally, I would want to remove these stitches that are on the overlap. Now if I was putting snow on the edge of a mountain, I might want that built up look to simulate the snow coming down. But on this, I want these to have as the least amount of density under there. So with that, I'm selecting the one I want to cut the shape with. So see, I need to cut this shape out. So I'm going to select the one on top. Now I will right mouse click and I will tell it to remove the overlapped stitches. Now it's asking me a great question and this is a wonderful feature in our software. It realizes that when I cut this away, if I cut that away exactly, it would remove the unders, the unders, the stitches on the underneath, but what would happen is, is when these two, sti these two fills stitched out, this would pull away and I would have a gap around this edge because it was a completely clean cut. Well, I need some pull compensation, a little bit of overlap so that it can't pull away. Well, our software allows you to do that now rather than cutting it out, then going back, selecting and adding in pull compensation. It's saying, how much overlap would you like me to leave? Well, I'm going to go ahead and say I want a whole millimeter. And then I'm going to say OK. Now let's get our magnifying glass so we can zoom in. And I'm going to zoom in and I want you to see. Do you see how it's overlapped it by a millimeter? So now when these fill and they're, they pull against each other, I don't have to worry about there being a gap. So this is a wonderful feature in this software. And you understand why we would need a little bit of overlap so that it won't pull away. So now this is the idea when you've got an overlap. So let's look at playing with a design. Now I'm going to come into my library and I'm going to go into my free Floriani designs, my free monthly designs. And I'm going to go ahead and go into March 2015. Now I'm going to hover over my designs folders and you'll see that we've got some fun designs in here for you. I'm going to grab these rain boots and this umbrella. Now I'm going to bring these on the screen and the first thing I want to do is I'm going to 
use the corner repeat and I'm going to overlap this design some but before I do any of that I want to look at how does this design stitch what's the order it goes in so let's look I'm going to grab my slow redraw sidebar and it's going to put down my umbrella then it's going to put the details onto my umbrella now the next thing it's going to do is stitch out my red boots now it's going to add the details to the boots so you can see it's adding some detail in there and then it finishes so that's great I understand how this design is going to run the sequence it's going to run in so now I'm going to select all items I'm going to come to my corner repeat I'm going to select that and I'm going to play here some now I want those boots to almost kiss each other in the middle so I'm going to bring those in and I think I'm going to change the horizontal distance a little bit too. Now I'm going to play with the angle. Now as I'm playing with this angle, I like how that looks. So now I've got a really cute design that I might want to put on a table topper, put on the back of a rain jacket. I can have a lot of fun with this. Now I want you to notice in this corners repeat box there is a, an option that is selected by default. It says auto resequence by color. Now that is a very good thing in the majority of the case. But in this case it's not a good thing because I want you to look at this design. If you remember when we stitched it we were slow redrawing we got the yellow umbrella then we got the black details. Then we got the red boots and it put in those black details, but if you notice they're missing. The reason they're missing is what our software did, because we told it to auto resequence by color, it took this black and added it to this black. So it took the boot detail and added it to the umbrella detail. The problem is, is the boots have to stitch out in between. So in this particular case, this is not a good option. So if I remove that and apply, notice my details just came back. It removed that auto resequencing. So I'm happy. Now I'm going to say OK and let this come up on screen. Well the first thing we notice is that we have overlap. We've overlapped right here and right here. So now I need to remove that overlap. So I'm going to select the umbrella that's on top and if you're not sure trial and error works. Right mouse click remove overlapped stitches. Yes, 0.5 is fine for me. OK. Now I want you to notice, can I check? Sure I can. It removed those stitches, undo as your friend, put it right back in place. Now I need to also come and remove any overlap that I have on this one. Right mouse click, remove overlap stitches, OK. And again, we have removed our overlap stitches. If you want to check, of course, just select, move it away, undo as your friend. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still suffering from the cough. So now that we've removed those overlap stitches, we know that this is going to stitch nice. Now again though, let's look at this, this sequence. It's going to stitch a yellow, it's going to do the details, it's going to stitch the boot, it's going to do the details. And we're going to repeat this over and over and over. That's an awful lot of thread changes. But we already know auto resequencing the whole design is not going to work for us. So instead, I'm going to show you a cool way to do it. We can move these manually within our sequence view. I'm going to select all my yellow umbrellas. I'm going to select this holding my control key. Continue to get your second umbrella. Let's hold, holding our control key, let's get our third umbrella. Let's go ahead and get our fourth umbrella. Now we've selected all of our yellow umbrellas. With that, I'm going to come right here and say color sort that. So what it's done is it's brought all the yellows to the top. Everything else is still in perfect order.
So let's get our black. Details. Let's hold down our control key. And let's go through and select those umbrellas. Again, I am going to sort. So now I have brought those in there. And I may have missed one. Nope, I didn't. Oh, but I did miss the yellow. Yeah, I did. I didn't get all the way down. I'm sorry. I missed one in this somehow. <coughs> Excuse me. Anytime I missed one, let's go back up and let's get him. Holding down your control key. Make sure every yellow is selected. Now we've got them all selected. I'm sorry I missed them somehow. Now let's do this. There we go. Now we can continue to do this until we've got them so that they are put together. Now of course drag and drop works as well. I could come in here and drag and drop just the same. So there are several ways to move this stuff around in here if you wanted to. So I could just come in and start dragging and dropping if I wanted. So you get the idea. You have several ways to combine these things so that they work out. But what we want to make sure is we would never put this black with this black. We want that to stay so it stitches out correctly. I could come in and start selecting my boots. Hold your control key and make sure your boots stay selected. So I can see one boot selected, two boots are selected, Three boots are selected. Now let me get that fourth boot. Four boots are selected. With that, I want you to color sort. There we go. And as you can see, there's your four boots. Right here's our four boots. Again, you could go through and start selecting, but just make sure on your screen that as you're doing this, you see them select. Holding that control key. So you can see I've got those soles, got these soles, and I've got these soles. So all four are selected. Go ahead, color sort. So we've reduced that down. There's those four. So you can see now we can go through and do it this way. So even though that is takes them a little more time than auto sort everything takes a lot less time than dragging and dropping one at a time and you can make this where it's going to stitch efficiently so you don't have to change the thread <coughs> so our goal is not to have to change the thread any more than we need to so as you can see you've learned about overlap You've learned about auto resequencing by color, and we've used our corner repeat. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's Project of the Week.